Well, hi, good morning, and thanks so much for joining me here in my shop for another session with these two radios, which one radio really, oh my gosh, you know, when, uh, when, when I first did this radio and then it didn't work out because of the speaker, and I discovered, or I heard, oh, there's another radio just like it. I thought, two thumbs up. This is great. Having two identical radios going to make this real easy. But some, somehow it's kind of gone this way. <laughs> because the radios are different enough that it's less than helpful having these two radios here, in fact. Speakers there, and go on and on. Okay, so the situation is, though, I did a lovely job here yesterday. I was actually quite proud of myself getting this string on. Basically, one, two, three, four, it's on. But of course, it didn't work because these radios aren't the same. <laughs> so, just to make it really clear what has gone wrong here, we'll give you a little close up look at it. I just realized this camera is not operating here. I have to stop and bring that camera on. Okay, so you can see where I've aimed the camera right in at the big wheel here. So let's take a look at what that looks like. So here's what happens here. Um, as, I, as I turn the, to tune the radio, I mean, you can just see what's going to happen. Get this far, that's the end of the road. So what really needs to happen is that string has to go all the way around the wheel again. I think that's the solution here. So in other words, I have to lengthen the string enough that this piece can wrap right around and come over the top again. And then that's the piece that can go over the top and then go down. Essentially means the string I've got on there is too short now by a long shot. And everything I did is uh, to be just cut away and removed. Oh boy, uh, do I sound disappointed? I certainly am. I uh, can't think of any other solution to this, so that's what I'm going to do. I'm gonna cut it at the knot here, try to preserve my expensive Australian string. Out you come. Oh, man. Oh. Oops, I guess I bumped the camera there, did I? Boy, I'm starting off in kind of a bad mood here, and I hear my cat calling me, so I gotta go deal with him. Peanut. Now oh, he's quiet. So having a little debate with myself whether I would put this on video or not, and I won the debate. Uh, I think I'm gonna video this whether you see it or not. Well, <laughs> if you just heard me, you're seeing it. but. Uh, this way and kind of do it in reverse a little bit from what I did the first time. Okay, that's one. Around again. Big wheel. Okay, we want to go all the way around the big wheel. This is the difference. Right here. hard to film all this. Uh, okay, go around. Okay, a little lost where we go now. We continue. 
menu. Continue and come up here. Good, and this will be where I want to tie the knot first before I uh, slip it. So now looking at the other end of the string, which is coming off the bobbin. That comes, oops, oops. from the bobbin right up here and over. That's it. This would be it. Okay, we we'll pinch together the string. Oops. Okay, as if it's knotted. Yeah. That's going to work. Okay. Now we got to pull this tighter here. Um, see how these strings are crossing here? I think I'm going to want to cross them on the back side like this one. They're crossed on the front. So before I tie it, I need to make that change. position so this is I'm going to loosen off one here pull this slightly okay, and I'm going to mark it okay cut it want to tie it right away. But not too tight, not too small. I'm supposed to run on the drum here a little bit. There, that doesn't look too good. In the other radio it runs on the drum, but I think in this one it's going to run in front like that. are still the same. Okay, release. Now we tie. This is where my scouting comes in. Shouldn't have said that. I'm trying to tie a, I think it's called a reef knot. Long. 
right on it's right on right on the money now we'll test it out Let's see what kind of situation we've developed here it came off the big wheel This is where you lose your cookies. If uh, if you got this far and then everything starts falling off everywhere, it's easy to uh, to, to just lose your mind. Look at this. This is not even going to need a spring. Oh, really? <laughs> That's without the spring. By Jove, he's got it. But the knot is in the wrong spot, or is it? Can we leave it up here? Can we can we let the knot slide back and forth here, just beside the? Uh, let's just try that. Can I slip it? Don't want to slip. tight on here I think. Uh, maybe it's okay. Is it okay? The knot goes right around the corner. It feels fine. I don't, I don't feel that. Oh look, there's no there's not enough tension. I gotta put that spring in. Also got an overlap here. What's going on there? It's an overlap that doesn't actually matter. Which string is it that gets the uh, this one? This is the one that gets the spring. I saw the spring fall down here earlier. Push this through, catch the tang, pull it back, and catch the string. Put it through with a pair of pliers. This went pretty easy last time. I'm thinking about the actual angles on this little end part here. How this will go easiest. Okay, I'm going to get it in there. position quite well to do this. Ha! Huh, got it! Let's see how we do with the knot now. Don't even feel it. Don't even feel it going over that. Is it going to dismount here? It's a bit of an angle pull that way. Definitely not the best way to do this. I'm going to have to put another knot in here and make this bump bigger and then if it gets rolled around it comes over in some other way, maybe it will dismount. It require me to move the string this way a bit. It's pushing it through here. 
don't have to push it through here. I can turn it through there. I mean, with the spring on, there's no way I'm going to be able to, to move it. Put the spring there. I think it's worth doing. So I'm going to disconnect the spring from the string. Can you just sit there? Can you just sit there? No flying off. Good. Okay, now I'm going to hold the wheel still, so if I go down to the bottom here, it can't move anymore. And I want to pull this, pull, actually, I'm sort of pushing the string. Pulling, you can't, this string now, it's, it's a push and pull at the same time. It's moving. Excellent, excellent, excellent. Go over a little further. Excellent. Okay, can we test this without something bad happening? Yeah, the nut doesn't quite reach here now. So I can leave the knot up on top. Try and re catch the string here. Okay, so I'm glad I, I put this on video. It's another string job going really well. I shouldn't have said that until I was done. it a little bit for the tension to cast through the string. Wonderful. And hopefully the knot won't interfere with where I put the pointer. I'm sure I can get around that problem if there is one. So I'll put a little bit of uh, glue on this knot. 15 minutes. Wow. Holy smokes. That's really good. Um, <laughs> hey, I deserve a big pat on the back. There it is. Thank me. Okay, what's next? Okay, so I put a little dab of uh, just uh, wood glue on there with a bit of water to thin it out. So this is done in a very typical way. Just going to open the gap on it a little bit. It's perfect. Oh, the paint's coming off this. I turn this into a black pointer at this point. How about the other pointer? Got another pointer. The other pointer is actually in better shape. It's also flaking a little bit. I change it to a black pointer. Okay, so this is on its way. Let's finish it off. Oh, it's thin metal. Bending it here. Well. black pointer now. Let's paint it off here. Okay. like when I uh, when I bent these tabs open I accidentally pushed the center tab back and so it's interfering here now radios have hints as to where the pointer should be on the string. So for instance you turn the capacitor all the way one way and 
then there might be a mark here. I certainly don't see any mark. Very carefully, they can be tricky about these. I don't see anything though. The other way, it's just being dragged along uh, on top of the string. So next thing we do is look and see, does it stop dead on 170 and 55, or does it stop right at the end of the black bar? Let me try that. So we're right at the end here. Now, hopefully it, yeah, the knot actually is going to keep the pointer <laughs> lined up. So what we do is just pass, but not by much. So it could be as simple as you just move it all the way to the left, install the pointer so it's just catching the end of the line there. Not too bad. Um, I put the knot exactly where the pointer should be. <laughs> Just about. Just about. Um, maybe I can fit it on the string here, kind of temporarily without clamping it, and then it'll it'll grip it. So I can continue doing the alignment and stuff like that. I can still slide it around on the string. Wow, did I close that right up? Son of a gun, I did. Not quite to the end. Just passed. Okay, so I'll just pull this back a little bit. And we'll have to, that's perfect. So it's going exactly the distance of the bar. So I'll bet you that is the, uh, that is the hint. That's all I got to go on. Okay, so the pointer's in place. It's not. Well, I'm going to lock it in a little bit tighter, I think, so it won't, uh, it won't slip. And in the middle of doing alignment, if the pointer slips a bit, so I don't know for sure the pointer's in exactly the right spot, but sure enough. This is the wrong pliers. Okay, so that's going to stay put on the string. The string really can't can't move because of the spring tension. This is it's really locked in there pretty good. Slides on the uh, on the capistan or whatever you want to call that spool. Nice. So that, that's good. That means I've got too much tension, and so I can you know, power break the string, which is good. All is good. Hey, why don't we listen to this radio? Now I can actually tune it on the dial for a change. Why don't we listen to it? <clears throat> okay, uh, with no particular antenna. Sound too good. What's with that? Looks 
What's with that big hum? Was that always there? I don't remember there being a hum like that there. I had to take the string off again. Because that's not coming from the antenna. I'm just looking at the capacitor uh, plates here. They appear to be pinched. Could I just do something? And we have virtually no antenna on this radio. Don't like that hum. Where did that come from? Okay, let's give it a, an antenna here. Uh, I think this is still... Careful, we're going to be getting the shock too. Yeah, yeah, volume rate, of course, the volume control is just on the antenna in this radio. I keep forgetting that. It's, it's not like, it's not like sensible. They're just putting a ground on has made a big difference. Uh, make this antenna a little more active. Maybe. Likes the noise. I thought I heard a voice. That's, that's, that's really not a good sign if you're hearing voices. That's there's, there's nothing here to pick up anyway, Jim. What are you looking for? Okay. Clearly, I can tune this radio now. Uh, I never hooked up the big old antenna here. It's not an old antenna. It's big, but it's not old. Not a very good showing here. Okay, I gotta make sure that the antenna is switched on. So I have to run for a few seconds. Unfortunately, it is switched on, so I'm going to take the ground off, and this radio is going to. I better turn the volume down because it's going to get loud. See? There. Come on, baby. Not a single station. There's one. noise signal so so powerful in here well okay um, I think what I'm back to now is uh, doing the alignment this time I can align the oscillator and we'll go through the alignment process now all the parts are loosened up everything's ready to go uh, we'll see how it comes out fantastic I think we'll see who won the election first okay so uh, what I'm going to try here 
is tracing. I'm not going to try that. Tracing through the uh, circuit of the radio, following another description I've received, a little bit more detailed description of how the detector works in this radio. And I think what I'd like to do at this point, I think I understand it, uh, but I'd like to kind of prove that to myself using my uh, tracer here and tracing the IF signal and audio signal around and around and around through here. And we'll just see how it goes. So um, now I do have a description ready to go, but I'm gonna I'm gonna try winging this at first. That's the description there. Um, we may have to turn to it in a moment, but for now. So the first thing I've done here is I've got my signal tracer hooked up directly to the output of the. Uh, signal generator I'm using, which is this guy, he set up, can you read it, 922 is where it's tuned, 922 kilohertz. So that's the sound of it coming out of my tracer. That's the tuning on the signal tracer. Now the challenge is, unlike lots of radios, this thing controls its volume at the antenna. So if I turn the volume down on this, I turn down the signal going through the whole radio, there's nothing to trace. But if I turn it up to allow the radio to operate, we have to listen to what's coming out of the speaker, which is the same as what's coming out of here. That's the confusion we're going to face here when I'm doing this. So this guy down, this guy up. That actually sounds better. Okay. Um, so I think one of the things we want to do is look at what's at the uh, grid of the 6B8 tube. I never, I never did I never did go and check the uh, voltage there, did I? Okay, I'm going to turn this down a little bit. Because I can turn my uh, tracer up and kind of overcome it here. Okay, so looking for and uh, this is incorrect I'm look I'm gonna I'm gonna look for the uh, 922 kilohertz signal at the top of the 6b8 which I think I did the last time around that's not right I'm gonna repeat my error here Sounds like I'm disturbing the circuit an awful lot with this, even, even though my tracer is not supposed to disturb circuits. So, not there, but that's okay, because what should be there is a 455 uh, a kilohertz signal, uh, because of the, uh, the transformer right here is only allowing 455 to get through from the front end of the radio, so theoretically. So we look for 455 on that grid. I have to retune this now here 455 is uh, here see what we hear now oh, I have to have this up a bit okay now now we hear it coming out of the tracer the actual frequency is... Yeah, 455, as best I can tell. Perfect. So we have 455 coming into the top. Now that goes... Okay, so that, that's some weird thing that's going on with my tracer that started up just before I turned the camera on. I don't know what that was. Goodness knows where that came from. Um, so we'll just continue on. Please survive during this. Um, so we would want to look at the plate and see what's coming out on the plate. Plate is pin 4 and the wire you could say is green. There's a green wire going to the second IF right there. So that's got to be the guy. Um, and we're looking for 455 coming out of there right here. It's, it's, it's 
such a loud signal. It's so powerful. Holy smokes, it's really a powerful signal. Overwhelming my little radio here at first. So I have a lovely signal there. Where are we exactly? We're on the green wire top of L4. Now the interesting thing... Wait a minute, it's not right. We're on the... I'm definitely on a green green wire. We're on one of the diodes. That's the, no, no, wait. I'm getting totally confused looking at this. No, that's good. That's perfect. Green is the. Uh, oh my God. Yeah. <laughs> Slow down. Take your time, Jim. Pin four. Blue, blue, blue is the one I want to be on. I want to be on the blue wire. Well, well this would look like the blue wire here. It's even stronger. Okay, now we're on the blue wire. The blue wire should also have the audio on it. This is the whole deal. So nice, strong IF signal there. Okay, so we're going to hear the same sound again, only this time I'm going to have to convince you that we're listening to audio. Okay, we're going to audio side here. What happened to it? Where am I? Hey, what's going on? That's better. Okay, so we should be able to pick up audio at that same point on the blue wire. So we have to trust now that the sound coming out of here can only be an audio tone. It's the only way we can get through here. It's, it's nothing to do with the tuning anymore. It's not a radio anymore. It's just an audio amplifier. I mean, obviously the radio has to be working because the sound is coming out of the speaker. I mean, I, I, I can't expect to not find things where they supposedly occur. So that, that's kind of the end of the road right there. Um, the fact that the audio and the RF are both on the blue wire. Let, let's read what uh, it was. Uh, someone named Keith sent me. I have signal first comes in uh, from the transformer L3 is applied to the grid of the 6B8 top cap, which I just looked at. The IF signal is there via the green wire. The valve, uh, 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 valve, the valve amplifies the IF signal, which appears as RF, the anode of the valve. The anode? Where's this guy from? <laughs> the valve where it is coupled to the second IF transformer by the blue wire. Do you want to apply a anode? That, the secondary winding of L4 green wire couples RF to the detector diode. The second winding of the, the secondary winding of L4 the green wire couples RF to the detector diode where it's demodulated. That load resistor. So if we look at that again, you know, what we see is my way back here. Four. So the signal that's induced in the secondary here is applied to the uh, the diode right here. So you get a rectified version of the IF signal that's here. The rectified version has an available audio signal in it and it is fed right back to the grid. It can sneak its way through this coil here. This is the capacitor that uh, is so critical in the whole deal. Let's see what he says about L C13. There we are. Make sure you didn't replace the capacitor C13 with a value you might expect here in a normal radio because in a normal radio you'd have a 0.01 there or something of that sort. Yeah, as he says, 0.05. Uh, if you put too big a capacitor in there, you'll drain the audio out. So if you make... 
C13 too big even though there shouldn't in a normal radio there's no real audio at this stage to worry about in this radio there is because it's been fed back through coming around again so if you make this guy a typical size you will drain out the audio at this point I, di I didn't touch the C13 C13 is a hundred so fairly large 110 picofarads you know large for a picofarad type capacitor so an R9 is uh, a mega that's a big guy there There's going to be some isolation between this grid and this one over here. That's what these big resistors, I guess, are doing. Very good. Everything's working. Um, uh, everything's working. So, you know what? Uh, alignment is really what's next. I'm not sure there's any real advantage to doing any signal tracing now. I think I kind of got, got rid of the problems and uh, everything seems to be working. Good. So if we, oops, we go here. Voila! Here's the instructions down here where you can't see them and I can't get them on the screen. Um, get get a bit of them on there. So here we go. We're gonna do this. Dummy antenna, point one, uh, microfarad, right on the stator, 455. Tune it anywhere. I got a control now. I can tune it first and second for the first time I should be able to peak these properly peak both transformers for maximum output then repeat until no further increase can be obtained okay I'm gonna set things up for that okay I think I'm ready to align the radio now so what I've got I've got a signal generator generating the IF frequency of 455 fed into the capacitor here just as the instructions say see where it says there connection of signal generator right, right down here stator terminal on front section of gang that's exactly what this is there's the connection um, and then uh, I have uh, this uh, output meter on the voice coil of the speaker that's gonna help check the tuning of the signal generator here a little hard for you to see. It says 454, which is 455 on that machine. Yeah, let's keep this in view. Okay, basically it says adjust the transformers until you can't get any more benefit. Let's see if we can get any benefit at all out of this. Where's my, uh, just looking for my alignment tool here. Where'd it go? There it is. Start with the easy one. It's not quite the right one to start with, but let's just start there. Watching the meter now. Holy smokes! So that doesn't necessarily make the radio stronger. The the IF may have been aligned, but at the wrong frequency. I'm simply moving the alignment to the correct frequency now. Uh, okay, now we're going to try to do this, 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 this horrible one here. Can I do it with a screwdriver? No hope. So this is the one I managed to turn. It's very difficult and it really showed no no variation. I think we're looking at the scope at the time. But watch this meter now. And I'll try to turn this. Going up. Going up. So, so both these radios had the both of these transformers screwed right down tight. Wonder who did that? So I'm going to knock down the input to the radio now. That's probably a better move. 
we hear a little bit of hiss with it. That, that's a little better. Let's go back to the first transformer. Okay, just so you get in, the, in case you don't realize what it is I'm wrenching at here. Now you can't see the meter, but I can. Going up. 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 It's just it's going way up. Way. <laughs> now you know what I'm doing. Wow, it's amazing any signal ever got through this. Okay, here we go. Let's even go further. Oh, going down. Okay, that's the sweet spot. Go back up. Right here. Will that be the sweet spot. Now we'll go back to the first one. Maybe when I put it on the oscilloscope and I saw those two bumps, maybe, maybe there really was two bumps. So I'm pushing on the screw head here, I think. A little lighter touch is required. And we're splitting hairs at this point. Down, down. Okie dokie. Hey, you know, that's probably made quite a difference. So I'm just reading the instructions. Peak bolt transformers, then repeat until no increase can be obtained. Did that. What's next? Standard dummy antenna. It's all this crackling here. Quite like that. Let's take this off. The next thing is, let's see, this is a standard dummy antenna. Antenna connected to the antenna wire, connected to the antenna terminal. 1500 kilocycles, dial setting oscillator. Okay, so we're doing the oscillator at 15. That must be 15 right there. right there. Okay, so 15 onto the antenna. 1500 onto the antenna. By the way, we're going through a huge weather change here. It's turning into springtime for the next four or five days. Normal temperature around here is a little above freezing during the day. It's going to be 15 to 17 degrees here. It's going to feel like like, like the spring has come. And my cats are outside already. Good for them. 1500. 1500. Keep, uh, keep a focus if you can, man. 1500 with a bit of power to it. Well, I don't hear it. Why, why wouldn't I hear it? Because it's just... Yeah, that, that, this is where the action is now. It's a little off. So if we go back to where 15 should be... Is that right? This is... <laughs> this is a tricky. That must be 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yeah, 15. That's all right. Oscillator adjustment. That's, that's this uh, back part of this, this right here. So 
your adjustment and make it sing. The screw is jammed. Make it sing. I gotta use a metal screwdriver here. Need the stiff shaft. It's a male thing. Okay, and then uh, just for maximum output. Oh, this is the lower one now. Dummy antenna. I saw so there is a dummy antenna in the circuit. Uh, tune to signal, adjust antenna trimmer, maximum while rocking. 1500. Wait a second here. Yeah, looks like everything stays the same stays just where it is. Except now we're turning this. While rocking. It's just the more open, the better off we are here. There, there is actually a peak right there. Now, is that the peak peak? We do a little rocking here. This is tricky to do. Let me turn the volume down. Getting the meter more in the middle here. This rocking thing's tricky with a little radio like this. What you're trying to do is align three things at once by moving two of the three things. So you're moving this dial. Oh. Hmm. My finger on the uh, chassis here. Okay, so I got rid of that by putting the, the knob on. Put the knob on. Okay, so now turning the trimmer. I'm not sure the rocking thing is really going to help much here. Confusing the watch, I'm sure. Can't tell what it is I'm moving. I'm not getting it any higher than where it is now. Let's call it aligned. She's aligned. Everybody, quickly grab an antenna. So the hum comes when there's no ground here. Let me just put a ground on for fun and pleasure. Down. What do we got? Well, I may have to get rid of the ground connection here. Let's try it. What do we got? Getting quieter. So we expect stations right in this area. Right here. There's a station and a noise signal. They're right side by side right here. 680. Uh, not doing it. We should get 640. Okay, so we're going to take the ground off the chassis here.
it's worse than it was. I keep thinking I hear a voice there. There it is. So that's about 66 there. There's no station at 66. It's either 680 or 640. Let's find out which one it is. I'm just going to interfere with it. With the signal generator here. more, a little better coupling over here. Let's try that. Okay, even stronger coupling. Okay, so it's 640. Any long wire type reception on AM is going to present a lot of noise to the radio. Let's put the antenna ground on. And all we're left with is the noise. So I'm going to put the uh, loop antenna on here now. And uh, let me put this ground back on just so you're not listening to the hum. Okay, Mr. Loop and Penna, you weren't, you weren't terribly dramatic last time, but let's try it again. Need a couple clip meets here. One to the ground. Yeah, th this antenna, you must have two wires connected. And this, this radio is not really intended for this kind of antenna. Really looking for a long piece of wire. Station 590, just down here. Let me tune the antenna. Wow, I'm really stunned. The speaker sounds great. Another station to try to get is 840. Oh, what was that? What was that? What was that? 
Who's, who's shaking loose here? Don't know. Okay, so I'll, I'll, I'll pick up the antenna here and we'll, we'll hear the, uh, the noise come up and then I'll search for the station. Can we get, we're searching for a French station here. I don't speak French and it is unfortunate so there we go I made it all the way through this radio I'm really kind of shocked but uh, there it is one last little thing here if I can do it very quickly let's see if I can do this now I don't have the uh, the audio battery that that battery in there I'm not I'm gonna put this light in I'm not sure this is the right no light Okay, so I'm gonna get a light bulb. We're gonna stick it in there, and uh, this goes into the cabinet next. Even at the last minute, this radio is throwing challenges my way. So I put these knobs on. They don't stick on at all. Now that's a simple problem. It can be fixed really simply. All you gotta do is take a screwdriver and shove it up in there, and then bend those tangs outwards. But don't do that because you can break those off so easily and once they're broken off you got an even bigger problem what's easier is to do something about about this and what do you do don't tell anybody what you do <laughs> keep keep this one a secret it in a little too far though. No. Hey, this may be a secret not worth telling anybody about. <laughs> If you have a nail in the wall or screw like you screw something in the wall a uh, plaster wall and it's coming loose and that's not bad that's not going to fall off now um, you can take the screw out shove a little bit of paper towel toilet paper Kleenex whatever you like into the hole put the screw back in to give it a try. I've got it hooked up to the loop antenna still. Everything's ready to go. Okay. Okay, radio. Where's the light? Did the light not come on? The light did not come on. Okay, let's go on without the light. No, let's get the light. Let's get the light. <laughs> hey, can't get the knobs off. So, with great wisdom I did not screw this chassis back into the radio because of exactly this kind of stuff how come the light didn't come on powers on here what is it powers on I checked the light oh how do you like that jeepers creepers
Okay, so I've kind of ruined the drama of the, uh, you know, the final turn on, but that's okay. Don't we all have enough drama in our lives these days? Like a soap opera type drama. What's, what's stopping you now? Disagreeable radio. Ready this time? Here we go. Look at that. Fantastic. <laughs> okay, that wasn't, wasn't the most dramatic moment there. Let's just. Bring down the house lights here for a moment. Let's see what we got. It's a funny shadow on it, doesn't it? Well, that's pretty crappy. <laughs> well, that's the dumbest arrangement you've ever seen. So the light is, is coming over the top, and I'm guessing it's not supposed to. It's not supposed to come over the top. It's only supposed to be in behind. Lovely hum, too. But I'm not, not worrying about that right now. Okay, house lights back up. Uh, light bulb situation. Yep, every step of the way with this radio. So I put a fairly large light bulb in here with a long bulb. Um, maybe we should be looking at a short bulb light. Um, short. One like that. That's a really short one. That's a 40. Uh, that's a mass of 1445. These 55s, which are kind of big bulb on them. Let me try this. Pretty sure they're all 6 volt lights. We'll find out. So that's now no longer protruding over the top. Yeah, that's not going to work. This is not a 6 volt light. This must be a 8 or 10 or something like that. Well, this is a 44. This is a a 51. I think that's what this is. I think this is a this is has the other type of number on it. Well, let's put this in. But I think this will also be too dull. Oh, bingo! Okay. So different bulbs uh, uh, draw different amounts of current. In in some cases, you need to be very careful about that. Uh, oh, I put the nods on. I'm, I'm too excited now. So I'm getting all excited because I know I'm at the finish line. I can see it. It's just up ahead. It's just up ahead a little bit. The other knob. We've lost the other knob. Here it is. Okay, we're ready. Now I'm going to get rid of that hum. By uh, the hum is probably related to the power supply I'm in my, on my bench here. The ungrounded power supply. The whole, the whole, the whole, uh, the whole thing is floating. Right, ungrounded power supply. Okay, so the lights, that's, that's a little more tame. These usually do have fairly low lighting. They're really intended for nighttime viewing. We 
still have that crazy looking. Okay, so the the thing is gone. Okay, we were we were right around eight. Were we not? Turning the antenna here. Mm -hmm. That sounded a little better before, didn't it? Was the uh, ground from the antenna was not making the contact, so it was a single wire. So my loop antenna was acting like just a big bundle of wire, but now it's acting like a loop antenna. Where that whistle is coming from? That's funny, 840, that's hard to receive. Of course, we're using the loop antenna, so it's not so hard. Go down a little ways. Okay, so that might be copyrighted music. I gotta get off that. Okay, I've gone enough distance now. I gotta retune the antenna. So what, what we're discovering uh, here, in, I believe, anyway, I, I'm not uh, expert enough in this, of course, to even have a valid opinion, but it looks like most of the uh, spreading of uh, COVID takes place in very personal settings, in people's homes and things like that, not so much in commercial settings and, uh, and the like, because in a commercial setting, like a restaurant, everyone, everyone here is taking all the precautions if they're going to go to a restaurant. My, my wife and I wouldn't we wouldn't go to a restaurant right now uh, but we did I did go and get takeout food and stuff like that uh, everybody's masked up everybody's trying to keep distance I mean, everyone's trying to do the right thing here so our daily rate is all over the map it's anywhere from a couple thousand across Canada new cases up I think it was 4100 yesterday and you know there's an off uh, like, like those the variation in those numbers is not from the disease the disease you know, when you're dealing with hundreds and thousands of people, a uh, disease like that, uh, it doesn't change from day to day. It, it's just moving up slowly or moving down slowly, or, or maybe rapidly, but it's not jumping up and down like this. That's all the results of uh, testing and data collection, uh, data forwarding, and stuff like that. So you probably know all that, though, don't you? Okay, well, you know what? I've reached the end of the road with this radio. Um, pretty happy with the result. Uh, great. Done. Done. And I, I know what's coming next on my bench. So, uh, get ready for a throwback. So thanks a lot for watching the series. 
Uh, wow, this is a, one of the most challenging, these two radios are the most challenging radios. Not the most, but nearly the most challenging radios I've done. Uh, lots of fun getting through this and I'm so happy that there's been a good result because look this is the whole thing that's been driving me this cabinet looks great do you remember what this looked like when I first brought it in here it was filthy filthy and, and in fact cleaned up really nice just water and a microfiber cloth nothing else just water and a microfiber cloth okay because it's baked light baked light don't ruin the baked light Thanks a lot again for watching, and uh, we'll see you tomorrow with something big on my bench.